Hi. Uh, thank you for staying with us for so long. Just a quick question. How many of you are here with uh, friends today? Uh, okay. <laughs> a lot of you. Um, if I were to ask you what you liked about your friend, what would you say? Maybe you've known each other your entire lives, and maybe you met just last week. And maybe they always have you in a pinch, or they're always constantly teasing you. However, no matter what, no matter what the case is, you like your friends for who they are, and they appreciate you for who you are. This will be important to remember later. So, uh, I didn't used to live in Thousand Oaks all the time. I actually moved from Orange County during the fourth grade when I was about 10 years old, I believe. Um, I wasn't exactly the most suave person as you see today. <laughs> I was actually rather awkward, shy, and uh, unathletic. I even had a pretty bad temper. But despite all of this, I still had plenty of friends back in, my, back in Orange County. I was around people that would fly in galaxies in ships made of Lego bricks so off-colored you'd think we were colorblind. And we would race around in carts on rainbows with plumbers in red and green uniforms and sentient mushrooms. That's a Mario Kart reference if you didn't know. <laughs> the point is, my friends appreciated me for being me and I appreciated them for them. However, that changed a little bit when I moved to, to uh, Thousand Oaks. So I used to attend a private school at the time, so I was protected from the idea that Maybe not everybody likes you, but it wasn't a good situation. I was constantly teased and bullied for the kind of person I was, and I, it got to the point where during middle school, I would spend most of the periods sleeping, not because I was unaware of what was going on or because I was incapable of figuring out what was going on, but rather because at least when I was asleep, I was a little happier than when I was awake. So I decided that maybe I'd fix my shyness at least and try to make as many friends as possible. The only problem with that was I didn't know it indicated a good friend. At first, I thought maybe people that look like me. <laughs> so I ended up just finding a lot of you know, Asians to hang around with, which, you know, as baseless as that may seem, was the only indication I had at the time. However, while they may have looked like me, they ended up looking down on me. But I tried to stay with it just to fit in. Then later on, I became even more desperate for friends. So I decided to look up anything and everything, absorb all the pop culture information I could, just so I could become more relevant to everyone else. I could name all, like, all 716 Pokemon at the time, but instead I was trying to debate why MJ was the greatest basketball player of all time, or what a step back in the fadeaway was. To this day, I still have no clue. But I tried to pretend just to fit in. I tell you what, I'm actually a great, um, I actually love the rap genre a lot, but anytime I tried to show off any of my bars or my skills, I actually got teased a lot. And, um, Every time, I had, to, I had to even debate why Hotline Bling was a good song and not just a mainstream fad that everyone enjoyed. It even got, I even got so desperate to make friends that while I tried to fit in with pop culture references, I thought that I had to do more. And I thought the one thing everybody can agree with is humor. Everybody loves to laugh to some variation. So of course, I decided to become funny. Except at the time, I didn't really know what funny meant. And I ended up being the punchline a lot of the times. But it didn't matter whether I was a comedian or the joke itself. As long as people were laughing with or at me, I didn't care. Then freshman year rolls along. I'm hanging around with three acquaintances of mine. Friends of a friend, if you will. Uh, <laughs> we were at the Thousand Oaks Mall, and we were just, uh, we all had watched a movie earlier, and we were just hanging around, getting some ice cream and whatnot. And I remember I was trying to be as cool and as suave as possible. Almost to what I am now, but just a little bit off. And um, I guess I was too in character because they thought that nobody could be naturally so suave. They're like, oh, he, this, this isn't real. And one of them came up to me and told me, like, it's okay to be weird. Like, we're weird too. Now, my first initial thought was, oh, like, you have no idea how weird I am. Like, I could debate over and over why certain Pokemon are stronger than others or why Samus is ultimately the best character in Smash Bros. <laughs> which my friends will know that as I'm actually very passionate about that game. But I came to a second realization. I have, no, I have no idea how weird I am. Because I had spent so much time breaking myself down and falling apart and putting myself back together with artificial pieces just to fit in with everybody else. And at the end of the day, I lost so much of myself that I didn't know how to be happy. I didn't even know how to be me. I'll tell you what, that day was one of the greatest times I've ever had. I had three bags of Wetzel Bits. I tried on a woman's jacket that was way too small for me. <laughs> and at the time, I met my first girlfriend. Uh, but most importantly, besides any of that, that was the realest me I've ever been. So what about now? 
Uh, I'm in my junior year, as I earlier mentioned, and I have genuine friends. People who will call me at 6 a.m. to make sure I'm okay and stay up with me till 4 a.m. just to play video games. I still do love rap, and I can still name all current 807 Pokemon, but most importantly, I'm still me. And the reason I bring any of this up today, the reason I bring up my story today, is to let people know if anyone feels as though they have to break themselves down or try to change themselves to fit in with everyone else, I highly encourage you to stay yourself, to stay true to yourself. Because if you aren't you, how can you know if you're happy? But don't worry. If you're looking for friends, I'm sure they're looking for you too. Actually, I think I forgot something. So, I originally wasn't going to do something like this, but I had a little bit of encouragement. To everyone from Westlake, you had no idea this was coming, so. So I need you guys to clap along with me, okay? Oh, it'll come eventually. So, I put a lot of thought inside of my mental. Try to figure out what in life is essential. I find it detrimental to be someone else. I feel like I've been falling apart and no one else can ever know what it means to take it slow. So I can be my individual self and try to figure out my own flow. And that's just me being free. I fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee. But being me and being free can seem so separately things. That much I understand though. I've been so childish, that's why they call me Gambino. And everybody want me to take a step back or take it slow. But I let you know I'm an individual. I can take myself, check the situation, situational. Be me and be, I don't know. I don't know how to do it though. I can be me, kill it, and kill it in all my own flow. I don't want to be the greatest of all time. I want to be the greatest me of all time. And I can do it if I really try. Fly high, just like a butterfly. And that's the same mental, that's the same me. And that vision can be a little hard to see, so I'll check the evidence. Cause I'm be worried about making sense instead of making sense. And by the sense, I mean the one that fills them dollar bills, the one that gives everyone shows. Everybody worried about whether or not I can make a thrill. But I can kill with my flow. Everyone telling me I'm taking it a little bit slow. And I don't even know what I'm supposed to be. I came to the same rhyme, like it's like three. So I'll just take a step back. It's like A, B, C, one, two, three. You already know that it's me. It's a freestyle, so I kill it freestyling. And everybody always telling me that I've been wilding. But I can step onto them, I can wear a nice smile. Turn up the dial, don't take pics, it ain't no Netflix free trial. So I'ma just be cool. And everybody looking at me, acting like I'm a fool. But this is my class, and I am the teacher. I'll be preaching the message, everybody listen to hear. So, Okay, so I begin to stumble, but every time I begin to stumble, the earth begin to rumble. And every time I'm on the mic, I try to stay humble. And that's a reference. So I call Kendrick and tell him what's up. So I'm this kid is killing it. And every time they call him, they compare me to MC Jin. You may not know who that is, but he is the man. From Fast and Furious to he driving when he can. And yeah, we driving, we vibing, we realizing the kind of future that we hiding. We still surprising. It's so surprising when I look in the mirror a million times, cause I feel like a million I just staring back. I feel like I'm on lockdown and I don't even know what it means to be me or what it means to do though. I could kill it, and be myself and just let it go. Cause I'm like frozen man, I'm broken right down to the go. It's in the let go from the get go. I'm then again just like a gecko, but I don't even know though. I feel like I'm covered like I'm Geico. I know, fly high like a butterfly though. Okay, that's three times in the three time verse. And every time I gotta hit him with something a little worse. No matter what better or no matter the weather, I kill it like we all here together. <laughs> 